Welcome to an inside look at Marvel's Avengers, presented by Intel. An in-depth look at how Crystal Dynamics and Marvel games work together to create Marvel's Avengers. In Episode 3, we'll look at what it takes to create an ambitious multiplayer and how you can play as your favorite version of the Avengers. But to start, let's ask the very question that set Crystal Dynamics on their path. What is the ultimate Avengers experience? For me, the ultimate Avengers experience is all about that cooperative and competitive teamwork. We want the player to assemble a team and play and defend Earth. I wanted a good variety of heroes that I could play and I wanted to be able to collect different things for each of the heroes. How about if we have the heroics on these characters affect physics objects and generate physics objects? A game where you can keep expanding, you're gonna keep getting bigger and bigger threats. You're gonna want to go to amazing places. You know, I'm fighting here as Widow, but I got Hulk on my left and Cap on my right. And, and just getting that sense that I'm part of something bigger. You, you have that and then you go, oh yeah, we've really made something here. So when we're crafting the, the systems for the game, we're asking ourselves, how do we make sure that as many people as possible can live their fantasy of being their favorite hero? Every person we talked to had their version of their favorite Iron Man, their favorite Hulk. The outfits are a mix of influences and they're really meant to have a variety enough so that depending on how you want to see your hero, you can show that on screen. I like Joe Fixit. I, I like Donald Blake. And that freedom of expression, we wanted that in the player's hands. People are recreating their favorite moments and that's really what we wanted to create for people. Not only for us to tell those stories, but for them to create their own. We dissociated the gear from the outfits because we wanted people to be able to look the way that they want to look without necessarily altering the way that their character functions. I like to play Thor with a lot of armor, that doesn't necessarily mean my Thor is super, super resistant. We really kept a lot of Marvel DNA throughout absolutely everything that we did. We didn't just have Stark Tech and we didn't just have S.H.I.E.L.D., we also have this other faction, the Inhuman Resistance. The gear has this really strong identity when you read all the details about it, and if you know your stuff, you know it makes sense. It all does things that you expect. So for example, in a cold, snowy region, you might want to defend against cryo-weapons that can freeze you. Some of the gear will emit pin particles that will shrink enemies. The powers that you can get from your gear and the stats that you can get from your gear are actually separated, so now you actually get to have access to more powers. When we first started development, right, we looked at our heroes and we were like, they could be classes. Like, Iron Man's very ranged. But then we kind of found that it would cheapen other classes. And so we actually completely reversed a lot of those original decisions in like the super early months where we were like, okay, no, everyone has to have a baseline of core skills, but no classes. The skills are the different mechanics that you can unlock as you play the game and uh, the different uh, button combos that will result in those mechanics. You will need to learn new tricks with your, your button combos, and they feel really good when you pull them off. For me, this is one of the best parts of the game because you feel like you're really growing as a hero. At Intel, we, we choose to collaborate with a handful or less of games per year to deliver an enhanced experience on PC. Because the PC CPUs have a lot of additional power that can be leveraged, and so early on, I identified that the physics system had a lot of room to grow. We could do a lot of additional objects in the scene, all that, all that kind of stuff. And so as you play the game, you're able to unlock skills and build your heroics into more powerful heroics. And you see that affect the environment differently as you progress. So early on in the game, your heroics won't interact with the debris and the destruction on the ground as much as they will after you've leveled the character up. All of these features help you feel like a superhero. And so if I played Thor, I play a huge intrinsic Thor and I have all of my heroics and I have lightning everywhere. But then someone else might just use Mjolnir for everything. And so we give you all of the power, you choose what you want to do with that power. In their descriptions and in what they're called, you can see the Marvel references. And that was really important to us. We spent a lot of time speaking with Marvel to make sure that the DNA would be there, that the identity is very, very strong. We really did create each hero individually. We didn't design them in a vacuum, but we really designed each hero as their own unique Avenger in this world. It was about what do they bring to the team? How do they make my dream team like even better? 
I think that it's always a misconception when you're creating such a huge title that one or the other comes in last, where you have this awesome story campaign and then you're just throwing multiplayer on it. And that was absolutely not the case during the entire development. We had to deliver an experience that was story driven, but at the same time accommodate me playing with a group of my friends or my AI companions so that I feel like a hero amongst heroes. And so even if your friends weren't available to play with you, we wanted you to have the experience of having teammates on your adventure. So then we added in the companions and uh, the AI is actually quite convincing at times. There have been times during development where I was playing with somebody and he dropped out of the game and I didn't even realize it. I just played with a companion all the way to the end of the mission. And then there was the moment when, you know, four human players could all be playing together and be having a great time together. For me, like, it's all about teaming up with your friends or with other Avengers that you just might not know. And then suddenly you recognize that you can chain moves together. Things just start to fall in place and your friends will have a play style, you'll have a play style, and that just comes across and it's fun and it's organic. You can just fight alongside somebody else and juggle an enemy back and forth. One character might throw it up into the air while another Avenger comes along and knocks it back to the ground. When you're smashing the ground, Kamala's palm comes across the screen and smashes another robot up against the wall. There's so much going on. It's so immersive, you just lose yourself in the gameplay. I'm very proud to have been, been a part of this. Everyone at Intel is. I saw it from very early on. There was missing textures and things were white boxed and I'm blown away by where it is now from where I saw it two years ago and the sheer amount of work and love that all those people put into this game. And Intel provided Crystal with everything that they needed. Computer hardware to test on. Every month or two, we'd, we'd put the game through performance testing. I can't say enough cool things about how beautiful the game is and how fun it is to play. So we tried to have all these layers so that everyone would find something in the game that they like. This is your show. It's the show for you, right? So when you're Miss Marvel and you're running through or you're Thor and you are bringing down the lightning, for me, that's what this game is. It could be as simple as looking a certain way in a certain place and that for some people is exactly what they're looking for. It's a platform for you to engage with all of these amazing Marvel history and Marvel lore. The other big thing is because it's a Marvel game, it's full of Easter eggs. So one thing that a lot of people have started having fun with is going to Thor's room when he's not around on the helicarrier. Uh, Mjolnir will be hanging out in there. We were making this game for Marvel fans because we are Marvel fans. In episode four, we'll take a look ahead and find out how the world of Marvel Avengers will continue to expand. New Avengers, new worlds, new threats. The team at Crystal Dynamics is as determined as ever to continue their story, and now that that foundation is set, the possibilities are endless.